had sex with him? Yes. You were 27, he was 60. Were you physically attracted to him? No. Not at all? No. Did you want to have sex with him? No. But I didn't, I didn't say no. I'm not a victim. I'm not... It was yeah. entirely consensual. Oh, yes. Yes. Stormy Daniels, not exactly the exemplar of family values you'd associate with Republican politics, but will the president's morality problems also become a problem for other Republicans on the ballot this fall? Well, keep in mind, this isn't just Stormy Daniels. Trump also accused of inappropriate, unwanted contact with a former contestant on The Apprentice, as well as 18 other women, and of having an affair with a former playmate um, who he tried to pay after they had sex, allegedly. After we had been intimate, he, he tried to pay me, and I actually didn't know how to take that. Did he actually try to hand you money? He did. Classy. Now, the president, he's denied all of the specific allegations, but there is no denying what he got caught saying on that, of course, that infamous Axis Hollywood. I did try and her. She was married. You know, I'm automatically attracted to beautiful. I just start kissing them. It's like a magnet. You just kiss them. I don't even wait. And when you're a star, they let you do it. You can do anything. Whatever you want. Grab them by the <laughs> I can do anything. Okay. Yet, some prominent morality and family value Republicans have continued to embrace Trump, including people like Franklin Graham, Sean Hannity, two men who wrapped themselves in both religion and morality when they went after Clinton with the Lewinsky affair. But the question is, why is there, beyond the obvious, right, so much convenient amnesia from those who claim the moral high ground? I'm not talking about which politics you associate you like one way or the other, but why is there either blindness or this one's different when it comes to Trump, especially with some supposedly speaking for his base? Let's bring in Andrew now with more. And Rich, the, the truth is, at least so far, that Trump's X-rated allegations haven't hurt him or members of his party yet, but that may be changing. Meet Congressman Ryan Costello, the Republican represents a suburban seat just west of Philadelphia, but he won't represent it for long. Costello just announced his retirement, and Trump's bedroom activities are a major reason why. Costello explained to the Times, quote, if I had a town hall this week, it would be question after question, do you believe Trump or do you believe Stormy Daniels? Why don't you believe her? Adding that, quote, Trump blocks everything out. What fuels the energy isn't the issues, it's the personality. Here in our region, those same kinds of questions may also be spinning in the heads of Republican Congressman Leonard Lance and John Faso. Republicans in divided districts will have to answer for the president's policies and his predilections. Trump's bedroom business now already impacting how Democrats and independent voters view him and the GOP, but not among those you might also expect to object, evangelical voters. In fact, Trump still enjoys overwhelming support among evangelicals to the tune of 78%. And David Brody, a host of the Christian Broadcasting Network, that's Pat Robertson's channel, thinks he knows why, as he wrote in a recent op-ed, quote, why in the world wouldn't evangelicals get behind and support a man who not only is in line with most of their agenda, but also has delivered time and time again? He, Trump, easily wins the unofficial label of most evangelical-friendly United States president ever. Brody adds, does Mr. Trump have moral failings? Yes. Critics will suggest a hypocrisy coming from evangelical leaders who are quick to denounce the ethical failings of others who don't have an R next to their name. But Brody adds the goals of evangelicals has always been winning the larger battle over control of the culture, not to get mired in the moral failings of each and every candidate. For evangelicals, voting in the macro is the moral thing to do, he writes, even if the candidate is morally flawed. And he concludes evangelicals have tried the moral candidate before. But if anything could crack the connection between evangelicals and President Trump, his accusers and their allegations just might. A new CNN poll of evangelicals asked if they believe Trump or his accusers. 40% say they believe the women. 36% say they believe Trump. 24% don't know who to believe. It's a small emerging crack in his most ardent base, Rich, but one that certainly bears watching. And you know, Joe, I got the argument, okay? It's transactional politics, okay? Who's going to give you more of what you want and you'll hold your nose or look the other way? But haven't we seen some evidence already? Take Roy Moore, okay, in Alabama. He won, sure. The minority turnout was much higher in Alabama than traditionally, especially um, in a special election. But suburban women, women in traditionally Republican households either stayed home or they voted for the other guy. Um, in much bigger numbers than they would have without such a morally flawed candidate. 
Why doesn't the same kind of thing happen now? And aren't we seeing that to a certain degree in some of these special elections? Well, I, I, I would push back a little bit and say I, I'm not sure if we're not seeing it right now. I think that when it comes to individuals who are going to make make decisions based on the moral failures of the president, I think we've, we've crossed that Rubicon, right? I think that to me, again, you know, if you're talking about to me why there is so much consternation on the right, it's because look, there are 15 women at least who have accused this president of some form of sexual misconduct, right? And yet the woman at the forefront sitting on 60 Minutes is a woman who says that it was consensual sex. And so again, I've met women who have been hor the victims of horrific crimes. None of them for any dollar figure in the world would go on a nationwide tour with a jumbo sized likeness of their accuser. I don't care how many zeros are on that check. And so again, when you put somebody like that at the center of this argument, it really in many ways imperils our ability as society to try to get at the substance of the issue. Except you know what's funny? I spoke to people and the first thing they brought up was, forget about her. He's doing that when he's got a two month old kid. His wife just gave birth to a newborn. Um, Vinny, and look at what he's doing. I'm not trying to relitigate every single affair. They knew before the election here, all these women to come out with the claims. They heard the Access Hollywood. Mm -hmm. I don't need to be reminded of the political reality. It, it, it was out there. But again, I'm gonna come back to the same question I asked you before about guns, except now put it with this president and the 24 seven reality show that he is, in this case, there'll be more women. You, know, you and I, you, you're not going to take a bet with me, even money here. More women are going to come out. You're now Faso, you're now Lance, you're now, I can f put another half dozen Republicans in our viewing area that are now going to have to answer the question, do you believe the president or do you believe the women? Full okay. disclosure, John yes. Faso is not paying me. All, okay, all yes, these, yes, all these. yes. But if you would like to, no. Yeah. Um, <laughs> um, listen, I think... <laughs> You want to get away. You, you, you want to get away from that. In, in situations like this, when the national climate doesn't typically help the the, the congressman or, or the congressperson, you try to make it about parochial issues. But here's why it doesn't matter. Um, everyone keeps yelling morality, 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 and this has nothing to do with morality. Every candidate I work with, I like to uh, take campaigns as uh, as a production. It's a, all politics is theater, and you're a character in this play. What is your character in the play? You build the brand around that. Ten years ago, we witnessed the demise of Spitzer. Why? Because he did something that went contrary to the character in, in the play. He was the sheriff of Wall Street. He was the law and order guy who's, elite, who's, who's paying for sex with prostitutes. That wasn't his brand, and he, and he collapsed. We saw the Access Hollywood tape. We, we knew this about him. Um, we knew Trump, I mean, from, the, from all of his interviews on Howard Stern to the uh, Miss America pageants or the Miss Teen USA, whatever pageants he has, this was who the guy was to a certain, uh, in the Atlantic City casinos. He had a gritty quality to him um, up until his entry into politics. That was his character. And now all of a sudden people are shocked. It, 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 and that's why I don't see your, you're going to see it reflect in the numbers. His job approval has gone up in the last month. His favorability has gone up. He's still underwater, but it's gone up. The generic ballot's gone down. It's not going to affect them because morality, the guy it, never ran as a moral candidate. Except there's been an enormous societal change just since that tape came out. The Me Too movement hadn't sparked when that Access Hollywood tape came in. And so, and, and. But now you're getting into a whole other area where now you're, you're the people but, who are, go who not, are going not, to be part of the Me Too, Me Too movement, just like those who are gonna be members of the Sierra Club, aren't voting Republican. You know, they're. I guess, it's, I guess what it is, that is they're, they're going to use this to reinforce their history beliefs. History always shows, off your elect, I mean, when you have the midterms, it's never good for the sitting right. president's part. I get all that, okay? Is it gonna be a bloodbath though? And, if you have to answer on top of all these things about after another mass shooting in a school, about more women, uh, Andrew, that are coming out with the president in, as I, I agree with you, in the Me Too movement, you know, all that. It was a great answer. I haven't heard that before, that he, he was an actor that never pre pretended to be something. Mm -hmm. Well, he did pretend to be something he wasn't, but you know what I mean. Successful uh, right. <laughs> We're not shocked by any of this, okay? And Will there be a collective shrug with this story? Or will they say, wait a minute, he paid 130 grand to keep this woman quiet two weeks before the election? 
and she took it. I don't think. And now a, she wants more. I don't think there'll be a collective shrug. I'm not sure that it'll be enough to upset or or boot Trump out of office come 2020, but it certainly will be a headache for other candidates. And, and Joe, you're going to be on a ballot, or you're hoping to be on a ballot this fall. Uh, you're running for the state assembly in in Westchester County. If somebody comes up to you and says, "Look, I've got, I've got a daughter, uh, and I've either got." that on one side of the, of the balance or I've got President Trump and you're on the uh, you're on team Trump I mean just because you've got an R next to your name just like he does what's your answer I mean the reality is that again for my purposes Donald Trump has literally nothing to do with what's going on in Yonkers what's going on in Yonkers is happening there for 40 years 35 years those but, are but you, but issues you, but you know I mean you but, saw in county but, elections last but, year but, that, that but, voters but, were but, swayed by the president what, what I will say again to your point Again, obviously this is going to be an issue that is a frontline issue in the minds of many voters. And ultimately you have to be able to look people in the eye and say that no, this is not appropriate conduct from anyone and certainly if it is true, certainly not from the President of the United well, States. Can, can I just say this before we end? That when Hannity and others said the President treated the, uh, the, the White House uh, as a toilet, um, when Clinton had, albeit consensually, an affair with an intern in there, you know what? I nodded my head and I agreed with him, okay? But the hypocrisy to go silent with what this guy's doing, and again, you know, I'm not trying to tell everyone how to live their lives, but to me, the skeeviness of this, doing it right after you have a kid and, and all the rest that's going, no one's defending this. But he wasn't president. Right. He wasn't doing it in the White House. But if he had an affair now. And it was now, 10 years let's say ago. he had an affair Stop now, you, okay? He, he traveled to Colorado, he had an affair. Your opinion he was a Democrat it. when he did it, I mean, he, allegedly. <laughs> yeah, God, that was good. Uh, my point, though, is to, I never want to hear from these people ever again telling people how they should live their lives when they go silent for the same behavior um, that they criticize others in doing. That, to me, is the moral hypocrisy. Well, it is. I mean, look, I mean, if you were a person who was of the opinion that Barack Obama defaced the office of the president because he went into the Oval Office without a blazer on, you can't turn around, incredibly turn around, and say that none of this stuff matters. So, yes, these issues should be important. I think that the issue that people on the right take with is not that some of these actions are morally reprehensible, not that a man literally having unprotected relations with women from East Coast to West Coast while he's got a, 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 a wife and a two-month-old baby at home isn't disgusting, but the fact that on some basic level, people are trying to use that to actually impugn the authenticity of his presidency. And I think that that is this kind of fine line where mm. we've gotten there, where, again, irrespective of whether people agree, everything now is tribalism because people I, have I, gone to their I respective corners. There's so many parts of this story, but to me, it's not just the sex, and you're right, he wasn't even president. It's the payoff right before the election that was accepted, but still... And that's why this well, thing's got some whole other yes, issue. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> All right, coming up next, though. Mark Zuckerberg, he's getting a hall before Congress. In fact, later, late this afternoon, agreeing that he would, in fact, uh, talk. Um, and fair, uh, Facebook, well, their stock price, it is plunging. Users complaining. Government now investigating. We'll explain 